Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about finding the domain of a function. When we find the domain of a function, we're essentially asking ourselves, what if any numbers can we plug in for x and not get out a y value? If there's numbers that I can plug in for x and I get an unreal answer out or just no answer at all, then that means that I have to restrict my domain or not include those x values. There are four main scenarios that'll cause us to not get out a y value or get an undefined value inside the function. So the first scenario we're gonna look at are fractions. So if I have a function f of x that's defined as a quotient of polynomials, so say this thing is p of x over q of x. Since I can't divide by zero, and get something out, I have to make sure that q of x, that denominator, does not equal zero. So if I have a fraction, I'm just gonna take the denominator, set it equal to zero, solve for those x values, and restrict or exclude those values from my domain. The second case is if we have a square or even root. So since I can't take the square root of a negative number, if I had a function f of x equal to the square root of something, whatever is underneath that square root, if, if I plug something in for x there, I'm going to need that expression to be greater than or equal to zero. So say f of x is the square root of some polynomial, and I'll call that polynomial p of x. In order to figure out what values I need to restrict from this domain, I have to take this polynomial, set it greater than or equal to zero, and solve. The reason I can include zero here is because if I take the square root of zero, I get zero, so I can still include zero. But anything less than zero, I can't. So I have to make sure that I'm setting this function to numbers greater than or equal to zero. The third case is if I have a square root and a fraction. So say I have a function f of x, and in the numerator, there's a polynomial, and in the denominator, there's a square root of a polynomial. Now, since I have both the square root and a denominator, I have to make sure that that polynomial is now always greater than zero. Now, this time I can't include the zero because then I would have something dividing by zero and that would also give me no solution. So I have to set this polynomial greater than zero. Another case you could see where there's a fraction and a radical is if that radical was in the numerator. So say I had the square root of a polynomial p of x over a polynomial that wasn't in a square root. Then there's two pieces of this domain that need to be restricted. I would need to make sure that p of x is always greater than or equal to zero. This time I can include the zero since it's in the numerator, but I would also need to make sure that q of x was always not equal to zero. So whenever q of x is equal to zero, I would have to exclude those x values from my domain. The fourth case that we need to be aware of is a logarithmic function. So say I have f of x is defined as ln of some polynomial p of x. I know that my ln graph only has a domain of 0 to infinity, not including 0. So I have to make sure that this polynomial is always greater than 0. I can't include 0 here. It must be greater than 0. So my domain will be restricted to when p of x is greater than 0. Let's take a look at examples of each of the four scenarios that we just spoke about. Number one f of x equals 4 over x minus 1. Since I have a fraction here, I have to make sure that the denominator is always not equal to 0. So I'm going to first set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. So I know that this denominator is equal to 0 when x is equal to 1. This means I need to exclude 1 from my domain. So if I write the domain in interval notation, my domain will be negative infinity to 1, u, 1, to infinity. Number 2, x over x squared minus 4. 
Similar to the last example, I'm going to need to make sure that this denominator is not equal to zero. So I'm going to first set it equal to zero and solve. So if I factor this, I get x plus 2, x minus 2. So that means the denominator is going to be equal to zero at negative 2 and positive 2. So I need to exclude these values from my domain. So when writing this domain in interval notation, I'm going to write it as negative infinity to negative 2, u negative 2 to 2, u 2 to infinity. Number three, the square root of 4 minus x over x. So I have two things going on here. I have to worry about the square root in the numerator and the fact that this has a denominator. So if I look at the denominator first, I just have to make sure that x does not equal 0. So I'll have to exclude 0 from my domain. When I look at the numerator, since that's underneath the square root, I have to make sure that 4 minus x is always greater than or equal to 0. I can include the 0 here because the square root is in the numerator of the fraction, and it's okay if I have a 0 in the numerator of the fraction. So now I'm just going to solve this inequality. I'm going to add the x over, and I get 4 is greater than or equal to x. So if I write this the way we usually see it, this would be x is less than or equal to 4. So in interval notation, this is going to be negative infinity to positive 4. But that interval would include the 0, which I have to exclude from my domain. So when writing this domain in interval notation, I'm going to have negative infinity to 0, not including 0, and then 0 to 4, including that 4. Number 4, ln of 4x minus 1. Since I have the natural log of some kind of polynomial here, I have to make sure that that expression or that polynomial is always greater than 0. Once I set up that inequality, I can just solve for x. So I'm going to add the 1 over, divide by 4. I get x is greater than 4. This is my domain. If I write that in interval notation, I would have parentheses 1 fourth to infinity. Again, I'm not including that 1 fourth because I need to make sure that this thing is always greater than 0, not greater than or equal to 0. That's it for finding the domain of functions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.